students when you're learning the single string positions around the neck for you novices what that means is when you're playing with thumb index thumb index aka Reno style and you've learned your different scale positions so you're not just noodling around so you have your scale position here one here of course so on and so forth. Um, you have these blocks, if you will, that are just like when you learn the guitar, you learn block-esque scale positions. And the problem is often you get trapped in those positions to where you'll be improvising in a position. And you have to sort of clumsily leap up and then leap up and it becomes really obvious that you're simply kind of like expending all your gas in a position, lurching it to the next one, running out of notes, lurching to the next run, and then running out of notes. Um, to make it more slick and not so much that you're playing in blocks, but effortlessly gliding up and down the fingerboard, it's important to have um, ways to stitch those positions together. And there's, there's three primary principles that I've found that good banjo players use when they're moving from a scale position to a scale position. The first and obvious one is rests. And I don't mean big rests. I don't mean obvious rests like you're playing. That's a little too obvious. I mean essentially eighth or quarter note rests where you just give yourself that split second, hopefully sort of on a syncopated offbeat that sounds sort of jazzy to get up to the next shape. And in this instance, I'm gonna play my shape. Let's say we're in E minor. going to get up to here on that D note and that's going to be my split second break okay and then I'm going to jump up to the next shape which is uh, the E minor shape here now remember if you're wondering how the heck do I learn these shapes all of these scale shapes as well as pretty much every part from 0 to 22 um, are demonstrated taught and shown in musical examples in our lesson scales for improvisation so make sure when you're done with this tutorial you head over to jamalong.org and in the search bar search scales for improvisation or just search scales and it'll pop up so the idea is you kind of have to learn the rules before you can break them and in this video i'm sort of showing you the icing not the cake to get the cake make sure you do your homework and learn those positions in our scales for improvisation lesson um, so watch this, go ahead, take notes, then go get that lesson, learn the scales, and hop back here to learn how to shift from position to position. So, to demonstrate that shift... So, it's still a tiny bit obvious, but not so much as stopping for a lunch break and then lurching over to the next position. So, let's say we end on this note now. On that C note, I'm going to noodle around for a minute. That was kind of slick. It was on an upbeat, an offbeat, so my rest was more disguised. Let's try it moving down. Let's say I'm playing my octave version of that E minor scale up here, also demonstrated in our Scales for Improvisation lesson. I'm going to stop on this F sharp note, very unpredictable. And that gives me that chance to move to the next shape. Let's try that again. Okay, so very quick rests are the first way you want to think about moving from shape to shape. 
The next trick that I really like is slides. Slides are your friend when you're moving around the fingerboard because all you're really doing is sort of sliding in the third, as it were, and it makes it sound slick. All we're really doing is dragging our finger across the fingerboard to the next scale shape. So let's say we had uh, that low E minor position. And I'm going to stop on this fourth fret on the third string. I'm going to slide up to the ninth fret. Okay, it's a big slide, but it works if you're moving quick. See what I mean? It does have a cool sound because it sounds like we meant to do that. Let's try from that midneck shape. And I'm, for demonstration purposes, using the G slash E minor scale. We explain the idea of relative majors and minors in our scales for improvisation lessons so you can actually understand how to find the minors simply three half tones down from your major. But that being notwithstanding, let's look at that shape that you'll have learned. What's a good slide point? When we hit that third string at the ninth fret, we're going to jump it up to that 12th fret and that gives us another shape. Okay, so I'm noodling around. Notice I'm saying noodling around. What I mean by that is the whole art of not just playing the scale literally, but playing it musically where you're just playing on the shape. You're not necessarily ascending and descending. So when I say noodling, just be aware that's what I mean. This is noodling. jungle gym as it were not just climbing up and down scales are like a ladder you don't want to be seen climbing up and down you want to swing and play and leap and do cartwheels on that ladder so we're gonna try playing that midnake shape when my ring finger hits that keynote at the ninth fret I'm gonna slide up to the twelfth fret and here's what I get Try that again from let's say we're playing at the 12th fret and then when I get to that second note I'm gonna slide up two frets and I have another scale position here we go playing at the 12th fret scale position there we go really really cool so that's a way we can think of getting from shape to shape on the neck so far we've covered brief rests, now we've covered slides. The third and my personal favorite technique is a brief open string, often a first string or D string, that gives us literally one note to get to the next shape. It's like a quick getaway point and it keeps the sound flowing so we don't stop. We don't have to have the rest and we don't have to use a slide if we use a getaway string. Let's say we're playing that low E minor again. some point I'm going to drop in that D string right here and that's going to give me a split second and I'm going to demonstrate that you can get anywhere if you're quick enough and I'm going to jump up to the octave version of that scale here at the 14th fret. I have one nanosecond to get up there so I'm going to play it pretty slow. Here we go. to look ahead wherever you're leaping. Look before you leap. Never more appropriate here. I'm going to slow that really down a bunch to kind of explain what just happened. I played up the E minor position. I came back down. I was on this second fret first string. I dropped to an open. I looked. As soon as I hit that open, I jettisoned up here and grabbed the 14th fret, which is the octave version of that scale. And I'm good to go. Let me play that in action. Same 
then going back down. There we go. That is a trick that will carry you very far in the world of scales. Um, it also works for melodic style positions. It also works for scrug style positions. For example, you could do a scrugs lick. As long as I end on an open first string, I can jump up. Scrug style, we use the open fifth string a lot. And melodics is a little more subtle because we're cross stringing anyway and using a lot of open strings versus fretted strings. That's the essence of that style. That's also demonstrated in our beginning melodic style banjo lesson at jamalong.org um, if you're wondering what the heck that's all about. But you could be playing down here. And when I get my open first string, I jump up. So it does work, but it's more subtle and hard to see because we're using a lot of uh, open string versus fretted strings anyway in the melodic form. So this lesson is to emblazon in your brain that after you learn the scale shapes, after you go get our scales for improvisation lesson at jamalong.org and you basically make sure you know the primary shapes. Now you can start flying around the neck using brief rests, slides, and open getaway strings to move from shape to shape. Let me demonstrate that one more time and then go start learning your scale shapes. Here we go. Here's using the brief rest. It has sort of a jazzy bebop sound because you're punching in that rest at sort of inopportune moments. Now the slide. Technique number two. And as you can tell, the slide works way better going up than going down. Technique number three, my favorite, once again, is the open getaway string, and it sounds like this. the illusion that you've got one giant scale shape all across the fingerboard and you're just using that open string to keep the flow of notes going as you kind of sneak over to the next shape. All right, have fun jamming across your fingerboard. Remember to visit jamalong.org for all your jamming needs and we'll see you out picking.